Boston Celtics dominate the Miami Heat. It looked perfect for most of the game, but it doesn't mean a thing if they don't repeat it. I'll talk about it right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Juice still being town's finest. Been a great team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gain in locked on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finished locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Peace. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts throughout the playoffs. Now, we are in the playoffs, knee-deep here in Celtics Podcast, so make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube, get into the comment section, let me know what you are thinking about the Boston Celtics beating the Miami Heat in Game 1, 114-94. to if you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I played a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now. Create an account. Use the code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase of last-minute tickets. Now let me just start off by saying I did a, a live a quick seven minute live post game. As soon as the buzzer sounded, I want to apologize. I tried something. I, I could never replicate the post game sound and I wanted to try something new. So if you listen to that podcast or tried to, and the mic was just awful, I had no idea it was going to be that bad. I am going to continue to try to do that. I bought myself a different mic to use in that situation so I'm going to try that again. I'm going to give you post game immediately, uh, eight minute, 10 minute reaction right after the game to just get you something here. Uh, I'll do it either live or upload it somehow. I'm going to figure it out. It's a work in progress. I apologize for the first try being spotty. So just putting that out there. All right. Later on, we'll talk about the need to do this again. This is great. It's just one game do it again, but not just, Hey, win another game, do this, do this again. Talk about the three point barrage and all of that stuff. But why don't we just start off with Jason Tatum dropping the triple double his first ever career playoff, triple double 23 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, a nice performance from him, two steals, three turnovers, a bad start to the fourth quarter. But part of the Celtics offense, uh, just destroying what Miami was trying to do defensively was Jason Tatum giving up the ball when he was blitzed, when he was doubled, when they committed two to Tatum, that puts the Celtics in a position to play four on three. And I'll take Boston's remaining four, Jalen Brown, Christophs, Porzingis, Derek White, Drew Holiday, against any three that anybody's going to throw out there if you're committing two to Jason Tatum. It's a trade-off the Celtics are willing to make, and – Tatum has done a great job of accepting the double team. There's a formula here for beating Miami. If they go zone, it's heavy Porzingis, which we saw. Porzingis in the middle. There was one play uh, in the third quarter. The Celtics made a big monster third quarter run where uh, Miami had cut it to 12, and then they outscored Miami by 20 over the last eight minutes or so to really break this game open and make it a 30 four-point game. 32 at the end of three, got up to 34 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. In that mix was uh, Miami trying some zone, get it to Porzingis, turning, drawing a bunch of attention, and kick it over to Derek White, up fake, dribble into it, long two, uh, easy shot, in rhythm shot. When you're up that big, just make your buckets, right? I'm not worried about three. I'm not worried about long two. I'm just saying make your buckets. So when Miami's do, going zone, that's what you do. When they go man, they're going to have to try to figure something out and try to take something away. And in this game, predictably, they tried to take Jason Tatum away and say, okay, maybe Jalen Brown's going to have an off night. Maybe Jalen Brown's going to get caught up in the moment. Uh, maybe maybe Drew Holiday has a uh, an off night, which he kind of did from inside the arc. He was a mess, missing a ton of shots at the rim. Like, all four layups he missed. And by the time he got to the fourth one, 
He was missing. It was the worst miss of all. And maybe he got fouled, but weird. Don't expect it to con continue. I'm not worried about it, but maybe there, maybe Miami saying, Hey, look, if we take Jalen, Jason Tatum away, we have a chance against the rest, but by giving the ball up and looking for his teammates, the Celtics were able to get some really, really good offense. And so Tatum getting that triple double was a nice kind of indicator of Boston doing what they needed to do against whatever defense that Miami threw at them. That was an important element to this game. What was Miami going to do? And was Boston going to read it, react and do it and, and make that next right play? And that's what they did. They came out strong. Anybody that was worried after the late season Atlanta Hawks game, the Knicks game, the, 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 the losses that people like really got up in arms about. If you any, if there was any worry about uh, hangover from that, there was none. The Celtics came out strong. They were the initial run of Jason Tatum getting to the rim, missed the dunk, got his own rebound, kicked it to Jalen for three. Then Jalen gets the dunk. You get it to Porzingis, he hits a three. It, it, that that opening 9-0 run was. Uh, just a quick like thunderclap for for the Celtics. It was the the building was kind of rocking. They were very ready for this team to come out in the playoffs. They were very ready for a Cel another Celtics Heat matchup. Celtics fans do not like Miami Heat fans. Do not like the Miami Heat. The feeling is mutual. I'm sure in Miami they do not like us. They make fun of us all the time. And so there's that rivalry there. No problem. Boston was ready for it. I said before the game, I tweeted it out. If the Celtics can come out strong, that roof is going to come off the building. And it did. That 9-0 run, just the place exploded. It extended to a 14-0 run. Then Miami makes their comeback. They, they answer with a run. Boston did a good job answering each time, right? You and, and if the Celtics take a punch, throw a punch, right? You take the punch. It's like a boxing match. You throw a few punches, you take a few punches. The key is not to have a, a, so many punches land that you get knocked out. And that's what Boston did to Miami for the most part. So great start to the game. Derek White was big hitting uh, early shots. And I think the Celtics did a fantastic job defending and rebounding. That was, I think, one of the keys here, the key for, for Boston as far as defensively. They not only swarmed, they not only um, blocked shots and challenged shots, they limited Miami to just five offensive rebounds. Now, Miami is not a big offensive rebounding team, but that was that's one of the weaknesses. Now, Boston's one of the best defensive rebounding teams, so the numbers kind of look weird. Boston is is good at defensive rebounding, but when they let up and allow offensive rebounds, they allow a lot of offensive rebounds. But second chance points, it was 11 to 5 for Boston, and the, the Celtics had opportunities to put up e even more, but they missed them. Miami had five shots, five shots at second chance points. They hit two baskets. That is Huge Miami to win this game, they need to take more threes than they took, and they need to get more more shots than Boston. Boston took 82 shots, Miami took 81, and that was completely a function of the fourth quarter. Because, uh, and I'll call it up here in the first three quarters, Boston had a 69 to 62 lead in in shots and. So Miami had had that big fourth quarter, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, that disparity is what allowed Boston to really, really build their lead. When the Heat, and with Jimmy Butler, without Jimmy Butler, the Heat were not never the best offensive team. So to keep up with Boston's offense, they were going to have to take a lot of shots and make a lot of shots. And by rebounding and limiting their second chance opportunities, the Celtics made sure the math was never in Miami's favor, that they never got so many shots that they could shoot poorly, but still stay in the game. That's a very important element. 
That's a very important element to the, the margins that Joe Missoula talked about. So that was, that was part of building their big lead. The Celtics, the barrage of three pointers was amazing. I'll get, I'll, I'll continue this conversation here about how the Celtics blew out the Miami heat. And I'll get into that fourth quarter stuff as well. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Now, we've all been there as a player or as a fan. It's halftime. The scoreboard's not looking good. You're feeling low. This is probably for Miami Heat fans. You're not sure your team uh, or you can pull out a win, but that's when you dig deep. Lift your head up. Say to yourself, time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime, with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress with your buddies. And there's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. That is so cool. Charge your uh, charge other players rent for your iconic properties, just like that classic Monopoly game. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests in tournaments and get the extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face and download Monopoly Go now free in the App Store or Google Play. Today's show is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has the last minute tickets that you're looking for at the best price. And not just for sports, although they are now uh, an official uh, partner of Major League Baseball, an authorized an authorized ticket place, uh, ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. So if you're in Boston, you want to go to a Sox game, boom, here you go. And you don't have to have a plan. You don't have to have ha had uh, thought about it for a month. You can just open up the app and say, I want to go to this Sox game. And you can do that because game time is about getting you the best deals for your last minute tickets, uh, concerts, theater, anything that you want to go to. They have last minute deals up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for all of these sports concerts, comedy theater, all of that flash deals, exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game time, a game or event zone deals, we choose a section and game time picks the seats for you and you can toggle all in pricing. So there's no surprise fees at checkout panoramic views from your seat. Just click on that. So you know what you're getting before you buy the lowest price guarantee game time will credit you 110% of the difference. What more do you need to know that makes that to tell you that game time is the best app out there for getting these tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download game time app, create an account. And here's a bonus. Use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase terms. Apply locked on NBA, L O C K E D locked on NBA for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube. Don't worry about those uh, ESPN, Fox Sports shows. Locked On Sports today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube and on the Amazon free Fire TV channels app. Go put it on. It's on all day, every day. So you can just put it on at work. You can put it on at home while you're cleaning the house, while you're just sitting around the house. You can have it in the background at work, whatever you want to do. It's all the local experts. It's great coverage, all the big sports stories, and no fake arguing. I hate fake arguing. I want real stuff. Okay, so let's get into uh, the three-point barrage, which Boston, uh, through the first three quarters especially, it was... Uh, 19 of 43 for Boston through the first three quarters, five of 28 for Miami. That is simply not going to get the job done for Miami. That's, uh, and, and I think for the Celtics and I'm leaving out the fourth quarter for now for a reason. I'll get to that in a second. This is where the Celtics built a 32 point lead. It was 91 59 after three quarters. Boston put up a ton of points. They took a lot of three-pointers. And while I did see some people complaining online about 
with three point shots. I didn't see very many forced shots. I didn't see very many settling shots. I thought the shots that they generated for the most part. And when I go back and rewatch the game, you know, I'll, I'll see if I feel any different, but I, I feel like the Celtics generated good looks at, th at three pointers took the right ones made the right one. Like they, they did what they were supposed to do offensively. Uh, so yeah, I know for some people it might be jarring to have them take as many threes as they took overall. They ended up taking 49 threes, 82 shots and 49 of them threes. So that's what 33 two pointers. Uh, it, that that's, a, it, it is a little out of whack, but also have to look at how, how Boston is being defended. They're trying to pack the paint. You're trying to challenge Boston to maybe have a cold shooting night. From Miami's perspective, look, th there's not much they can do, right? This is, they they are, the, the odds, when you say the odds are against them here, and I'm not speaking out of turn, like Miami fans know that this is, I, I listen to Locked On Heat. There's nothing to lose. No one expects the Heat to win. Heat fans don't expect the Heat to win, right? This is, by all accounts, the Celtics came into this game favored by 14 points. Vegas doesn't set lines at 14 for a reason, for no reason. Miami needs something to break their way. They just they don't just need to play well. They need to play well and for something to go their way. And so they need the Celtics to have a cold shooting night. They need to have themselves a hot shooting night. And they need for the Celtics to do something like relax, to not take the game seriously, to think they have things well in hand and then be like, ah, we're not going to do what we do. That's where the fourth quarter comes in. That's where the fourth quarter and the Celtics kind of taking that back seat. And all of a sudden Miami's offense, which struggled, puts up 35 points on 14 of 19 shooting, seven of nine from three. Uh, Boston was three of six from three, but this is where if you're Miami and I, I haven't even listened to lockdown. He, they're probably rec we're recording this at the same time. Probably they're probably looking at that fourth quarter and saying, see, Boston is prone to this. If Boston can do this for in the first quarter, if they can come out in game two and think, ah, we had this by 34, we ended up winning by 20. This is cool. We just don't, we don't have to really try and that's Miami's in. And I like that Christoph Porzingis was like, no, we have to look at that fourth quarter and say, we can't just think we're going to walk past them. Because if you do think you're going to walk past them, that's going to be, that's going to lead to this, this 35 to 23, right? The, the, the lead went from 34 down to 14. And at 14, and like four minutes to go, you say, you know what, man, <laughs> if they hit another three, another couple of three pointers, you get into single digits in the last couple of minutes. Well, now we're starting to get into, did the Celtics just botch a 34 point lead? And now we're getting into a clutch game. Is that really where we're going here? Now, obviously not. That's the Celtics took their time out. They regrouped. Uh, Missoula let them try to get out of it. And then he called his timeout. They came back, they win by 20. So I'm not going to force the Celtics to apologize for winning by 20. If you said before the game, Boston's going to win this game by 20, do you care how they get there? Probably not, because if they're going to win by 20, then they win by 20. That's great. So I'm not concerned necessarily that they're going to, like, this is going to happen again. But it's yet another example of when Boston does get away from all of these things that I was talking about, defending, offensive rebounds. The, the, the Heat got uh, nine fast break points in this, in this uh, run here, and that's because the Celtics only took 13 shots. The Celtics only had one offensive rebound and the Celtics, you know, they, they weren't able to go set their defense. When you only hit six shots in the quarter, that's not really an opportunity to go set your defense. And Miami without Jimmy Butler likes to play fast. They, they are capable of somebody getting hot. DeLon Wright, perfect five for five. 
there's always somebody on Miami that's going to have one of these outlier games. So just manufacture the right shots. And like I said in previous podcasts, the two words, you know the two words that I'm using, methodical, which they were for three quarters. Methodical, beautiful. They check checkbox on methodical. Ruthless, <sighs> got to work on the ruthless part because ruthless would have been at 34. You play hard for three, four more minutes and you make it 40, 45, 50. I'm not saying Miami isn't capable of making a run even when you're playing like that because they are. But when Miami makes a run because you're playing of the, like that, ah, that's a little bit of an issue. I'm not going to make a big deal of it. Because when you're up 34 and you end up winning by 20, it's fine. It's fine. Just understand that when you play like that, you're prone to that stuff happening. And it should be a little reminder. Just don't play like that. Don't have that six-minute swoon where you just stop. If you have a six-minute stretch where Miami goes off, fine. That's going to happen. If you have a six-minute stretch where you're just like, setting illegal screens and throwing the ball out of bounds and missing layups. Like, well, that's, you gotta get to fix that. So not a big deal. All right. Now the Celtics did this perfect game. Now do it again. What they just did. It does not matter. Talk about that next. Today's show is brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy, made fun because it's you against the numbers. There's 3 million people on prize picks, which makes it the number one fantasy sports app. And you're playing against none of them, right? You're playing against you and the numbers. So you can get in on this Celtics playoff action, this NBA playoff action, and you clean up to a hundred times your money on prize picks uh, as you and the world's best basketball players take the game to a new level this postseason. You can win up to a hundred times your money with as few as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars with basketball, Hockey, Bruins are in the playoffs too. Uh, college basketball, oh no, college basketball is done, sorry. Uh, get your whatever. It's everything but college basketball on prize picks. America's number one fantasy sports app. You can get in there and you get quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, a huge selection of players and stat types. That's what makes prize picks the number one fantasy sports bet app out there. Uh, if you've got the skills, you can turn 10 bucks into a thousand with just a few taps. So go check out Prize Picks. Download the app today. Use the code LockdownNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. So you're already winning, right? You put in up to $100. They will match up to $100. Now you can go play Prize Picks and maybe turn some of that into 10 times whatever you've you've put down by picking more or less. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA. I'm back this week, Monday. Uh, Monday is uh, a, a recap of all of the big games, so you get all of the uh, the big stories there. And then rotating hosts all week long. I'm there on Wednesday with Jake Madison, so go check out Locked On NBA uh, wherever you get your podcasts. So this was great. Basically a perfect game for the Celtics. First, you know, the fourth quarter, uh, notwithstanding. Oh, by the way, before I get into this little spiel, um, Caleb Martin, that play, I'm sure some of you are like, hey, John, what the hell do you think about this this Caleb Martin thing? Was that – I'll put it this way. I don't think it was a dirty play. If, you, if I had to choose, I look at it and I have to choose, I'm leaning that was not a dirty play. But – I can be convinced that it was. I don't think he's out there trying to hurt Jason Tatum. If anything, what I think is that he was was going to try to slam into Tatum. I think he was trying the, there was an offensive rebound and I think he was trying to kind of take Tatum and and hit him hard, no doubt. And kind of take him out of the play so 
Miami can get the offensive rebound. And Tatum jumped, and and Martin hit him as Tatum jumped. Like, I don't think Caleb Martin saw Tatum in the air and said, aha, I got him. I think Tatum, I think he wanted to hit Tatum and went at him when he was on the ground. And when Tatum jumped, it was kind of too late. That's my thought on it. Maybe I'm wrong. Could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong about that. But that's my take. Tatum is fine. He got up. Uh, the way he fell was actually not bad. He kind of slid down and it he hit the floor hard, no doubt, but I think he's okay. He was walking fine after the game. He seemed fine at the uh, at the podium. He was kind of spry walking up to the podium. So he wasn't like, uh, I would tell you if he was hurting, if he was like looking like, oh man, you know, geez, Tatum looks like crap. No, he, he looked fine. He seemed fine. Um, I know it's up for some debate. So people in the comments might say it was dirty. Okay, I'll listen. I'll listen. But that's my take. I don't think it was a dirty knock him out of the air type of situation. I'll leave it at that. Now, aside from that, and aside from the beginning of the fourth quarter, okay, you have a 34-point lead. And if we're being honest, kind of worked out like the Celtics thought it would. 34, eh, we got it. All right, they made a comeback. We, a timeout. All right, let's sit down. Let's get ourselves together. Come back. Execute, execute, execute. 20-point win. Pfft, done. So it's almost kind of bad that the Celtics, this is like, yeah, it kind of worked out fine. But regardless, that 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 that's a different story. If it comes back to hurt them in another game, then we got a problem. They should know the difference by now. They should know what to do by now. And at a 30 point lead, 34 point lead in the fourth quarter, they let up a little too much. Okay, fine. Aside from that, this was a pretty perfect game one. Miami has no real answers for the Celtics. It's not a knock on Miami. They don't have Jimmy Butler. Um, I don't think that the team has was was very well constructed. They've been kind of struggling all year long. This has not been the the best season in Miami. Um, they're going to have to start over at some point. There's going to have to be some level of rebuilding here. I don't think moving forward with Jimmy Butler uh, as the number one option at his age is is a viable option, right? You can't have your best player be the guy that's coasting for six months, five months. So Miami doesn't have any answers. Boston can't get caught up in that, right? All Boston can do is forget about game one. At this point, by the time, like, go home, have a drink, sit back and relax, watch some of the other basketball that's on, get a good night's sleep, wake up in the morning, go to film. Game one only exists now as what did we do right? What did we do wrong? What can we fix? What can we do better? And that's it. It's no celebrations. It's no final score. It's no score at all anymore. Score doesn't exist anymore after this. It's, hey, here's a play where Miami did X, Y, Z. This is what we did well. Good job getting off the ball. Good job setting the screen. Celtics ran a couple of creative things. I'm going to try to break those down as I rewatch the game uh, because I thought they they handled some of what Miami was trying to do a little bit creatively. So regardless, uh, you watch the film and you're only looking at the game as chunks of information. They tried this. We did this. That was good. They tried this. We did this. That was bad. Correct this. Do this again blah, 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 and you're done. When Wednesday comes around, game one doesn't exist. You start from the beginning. You start from the beginning and you do it again. Come out with that same energy. Now, it's not going to necessarily go the same way, right? You come out with the same energy doesn't mean it's a 9-0 run timeout and the run extends to 14. Miami could hit some shots. Miami is a, a playoff team too. Miami is very well coached team too. They have a lot of talent on that team. It's not the right mix of talent. And, and that makes it a problematic team, but they've got a lot of talent and they are capable of scoring and doing things that they didn't do in game one. So Boston has to continue 
to come out with the right mindset, the right attitude, the right execution, do it again. If they make, if they blitz Jason again, keep going at it, get off the ball, play the four on three, take the advantages. If Tyler Hero or uh, Nikola Jovic or Jaime Jaquez uh, are out there and you can exploit it, exploit it, right? If they go zone, it's Porzingis, it's Derek White, it's Holiday. Maybe Holiday can finish a little bit better. Do it again. Make Miami exhaust all of their options again. And then you keep going. This is the methodical and ruthless part that I keep talking about. The methodical part comes first. It always comes first. Methodical comes first by playing the right way. Ruthless comes in the fourth quarter. They miss the ruthless by not executing in the fourth quarter and letting that 34 get down to 14. So be the ruthless part next time and win this thing by 40 if the opportunity presents itself. Maybe it's going to be a four-point game in that spot, and Boston has to just handle it however they handle it. But Boston is very clearly the better team, and if they come out with that mindset again, they should win this easily. They should win this series easily. But it starts with game two. Don't worry about the series. I can worry about the series. You worry about what's in front of you. You, the listener, you, the watcher, worry about subscribing to the podcast so you can get this podcast in your device, on your device, every single day. As soon as it hits the feed, it gives you a notification. Boom. Same thing on YouTube. Ring the bell. When I drop the video, you get notified. Get into the comment section. When I do a post-game thing next time, I swear I'll have better a better mic. That was a big whiff on my part. Apologies for that. I'm going to try to give you, I'm just trying to give you as much Celtics content as I can so you can have fun this playoff run because I think it's going to be a special one. So if you're subscribed, thank you. If you're not, I, I would love you to. And if you are a regular listener, Please spread the word. Please tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.